All right, welcome back. Now, the Intersex Persons Bill 2023, drafted by the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights, seeks to introduce intersex as a third gender marker at a time when the group is fighting for recognition and against stigma and discrimination. Tonight, we will unpack the bill and, more importantly, highlight the challenges of intersex persons. Well, joining me in studio to my far right is Dr. Dennis Wamalwa, a commissioner with the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights. And next to him is uh, Veronica Mwanki, head of the Intersex Persons Implementation Coordination Committee Secretariat. And we also have Eric Mukoya, a human rights and governance experts. Thank you all for joining me. I clearly missed the memo on the Kitenge theme here, <laughs> but welcome nonetheless. Let me begin with you, Veronica, sitting on the committee that helped kind of think through this bill before it was drafted for the benefit of our viewers, because we hear intersex, and I think there's a lot of misunderstanding and misconception around who is an intersex person. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Victoria. And thank you for the invitation. Uh, one of the key things I would want to say is that uh, it is true there is misconception about who intersex persons are. But I think um, oftentimes because we don't understand, so we don't seek to get information. And I'm happy that Citizen TV has given us this opportunity. Mm. So to start with, I would say intersex persons are children who are born with a biological sex characteristic that are ambiguous. And this then makes it very difficult for this child to either be uh, said to be a typical male or female. Right. So oftentimes, if you want to use maybe a loose language or maybe simple language, you say their children were born in between. And uh, one of the key things is that if you then take them for medical assessment, you realize that the ambiguity of the sexual uh, biological characteristic will always uh, 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 will, can, only, can only be established if you look at the four parts. Right. The anatomy of what we see, uh, and then that is the genitalia. Then, of course, you go to the chromosomal makeup, the chromosome makeup. Then you go to the issues of uh, the hormone, or the hormonal makeup, and of course, lastly, the gonadal, which is the internal reproductive system of any human being. Right, Dr. Wamalwa, let me come to you because you are the first intersex person to occupy a top public office. Congratulations, I must sure. say, making history. Thank um, you. And your reality is what Veronica just described. True. Right. So how much does it mean to hold the position that you have uh, in raising more awareness? Uh, thank you, Victoria. Uh, probably before I answer that, I just wanted to correct something that uh, you mentioned during your introduction. Mm. You mentioned that uh, now we have the third gender, Maka. I wish to mention that uh, actually the media and even the print media have been uh, kind of uh, confusing this. Mm. Uh, what we have right now is uh, the third sex marker. Okay. Not gender marker, because gender is a social construction. Mm. But sex is a biological you know, characteristics uh, based on uh, what Veronica just mentioned. Okay. So as we go out, let's talk about the third sex marker, not gender marker. Thank you for the clarification. Thank yeah. you, yeah. So back to your question. I think uh, first of all, I mean, first and foremost, I want to appreciate the country for having recognized intersex persons. And uh, for me, holding this position, this uh, office, yeah. as an intersex person, it means a lot for all intersex persons who are actually still hidden behind there. Mm. Uh, through the commission, through IPIC, we're doing a lot of uh, awareness. Uh, we're going out. Personally, I've actually taken it you know, uh, as a mission yeah. to make sure that all intersex persons' rights are respected. And how can they be respected? First, they have to come out and be counted. You're aware that uh, you know, during the last census, we're the first country in the, in, actually on the continent to have recorded 1,524 intersex persons. But this is not a true representation because when you look at the general kind of uh, population, you know, generally 0.05 to 1.7% of the whole world, children are born intersex persons. Mm -hmm. When you look at our population, it means that in Kenya, with a 46 plus million, it means you have more than 300 to 700 intersex thousands intersex persons. Mm -hmm. So for me, one, having held this position, so many intersex persons have now come out mm -hmm. because we're doing a lot of campaign. We're telling them it's a biological condition. Come out and be counted. 
come out and just contribute yeah. to the you know to the development of the country like any other person before we unpack the bill let me just do a follow-up because you mentioned there's need for them to come out but stigma has held Mm -hmm. many back from doing sure, that sure. you know let's talk about some of the challenges that they encounter um challenges of course one we have uh, social challenges we have uh, legal challenges yeah. uh, i want to embark on social challenges because as a person i went through quite some uh, challenges eh? mm. one we have aspect of discrimination we have issues of rejection because of lack of understanding people do not really understand who intersex persons are and this is what we're working on. Uh, we have issues of, uh, you know, breakages in marriages. Most of intersex persons, you'll find that they are living with single parents. Why? Because of social, you know, misconception. They think it's a bad omen. When we go to school, it's a very difficult for, you know, an intersex person to blend in the social amenities that we're having in our school setups. Okay. Because, you know, when an intersex person grows, during the, you know, the teenagehood, the body starts changing. Uh, you are socialized like a, like a girl, then at this point now, the body starts responding, leaning, you know, dominantly into a male. Right. When, you know, you go to a toilet, you'll be told, mm -mm, go to this one, <laughs> this one. Then even, you know, I mean, in terms of uh, challenges in hospitals, most of uh, what we call corrective surgeries, which has been uh, actually a debate, yeah. because right now we're saying at what point should a child, an intersex child, go for, for corrective surgeries? Myself, like I talked to you, Victoria, I've undergone over 39 major operations wow. to be what I am today. Because during my teenagehood, you'll think, wow, this is a beautiful girl. Next time, maybe we'll have another session. Wow. So they need to have those, I mean, uh, the kind of uh, uh, the consensus. Mm. Like most of the surgeries I went through, thanks God I had a very supportive family. If I was given a chance to decide, maybe I would have decided otherwise. Right. So, you know. That's what we're saying. These are some of the challenges. In terms of uh, the medical treatment, yeah. uh, NHIF, for example, or most of the insurance companies do not cover hormonal treatment mm. because they think it is uh, cosmetic, which is not true. I've been testosterone since I was nine years old. Wow. Yeah, so I mean, there are just basically a few uh, social challenges, but my colleague will maybe want to contribute on the legal challenges. No, certainly. Um, and, and let's come to you, Eric, to talk about the you know key proposals that are coming out in this bill and, and why they're so necessary at this time. OK. Thanks, Victoria, and thanks for having me around. Uh, before I talk about key proposals, yeah. I think I need to contextualize this conversation. Sure. Uh, so number one, we need to remember that um, this country has a constitution, mm. and the constitution has given freedoms, it has given rights. Uh, if you go to what's called 3-1, it behoves all of us, including the state, to defend this constitution, to respect it, observe it, and defend it. Mm. What that means, therefore, is that everyone in this country has a right to be protected by the constitution. <coughs> Having said that, I would like to remind us of four principles that are so central to why this law is key. One, we have the principle of safe spaces. If you've just listened to what Commissioner Amalo has said and what Veronica said earlier, you realize that intersex persons have not been safe. As we, we transit and go to what's called 29 and talk about physical safety of these people, we are saying that this bill allows us to create safe spaces for them to come out, be counted, be heard, and be understood. That's principle number one. Principle number two is let's do everything in the interest of the intersex persons, whether it's a child, whether it's an mm. adult. And the importance is this, that we may not understand the internal and the external of what they go through. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it is very important that every action, whether it's a program, whether it is a, a financing issue, must be done in the interest. And if you, you go to the Children's Act, which has already picked that, the intersex child within the Children's Act of 2022, everything must be done in the interest in persuasion, in persons to Article 53.2 of the Constitution. Mm. Number three, it, you cannot do anything for us without us being involved. So nothing for us without us. That is key, that intersex persons are claiming the space of the decisions that have previously been made. And that's a major proposal in, the, in this bill, that when a child is born intersex, 
or if a child is born and the ambiguity is there and the midwife and the doctors around do not understand, the bill proposes you make reference mm -hmm. to a higher authority with more expertise than yourself. And why do we do that? Because many mistakes have been made. That at the point of puberty, when the body manifests into what it's supposed to be, yeah. and you had made a, a surgery when the kid was young, then you realize that a, a mistake was, was done. Then the last principle I need to talk about, which is also part of SDG 16, is leave no one behind. We have a systemic problem, and we have an attitude problem. So we have a people and a system problem. So if the system is wrong, and the people have wrong attitudes, then you know what it means. Having said that, then I can now mention one or two things about the bill. Yeah. Number one, it is about recognizing this child as an intersex child when they're born. Previously, the documents will indicate XX uh -huh. because we weren't so sure, because we only had the binary of male, female. Right. And therefore, because we are not so sure who you are, we put XX. What does that mean? That you have condemned that child to problems of legal documents. They will not get an ID, they will not get a passport, they will not get a birth certificate, and if they get a birth certificate, it has XX. It means, if you called me Mary, for instance, mm. and I look like Kevin, and these are the normal stereotypes of naming. Right. There's no way it is really indicated that when you are Kevin, you must be a, a man anyway. Right. But the stereotypes are there. So that is uh, the first thing the bill solves. The second aspect, it is the direction it has given to the registrar of births, mm. that you must m provide the eye marker. So the, we are going to have three markers, sexual markers. One is male, the other is female, the other is eye. And this eye, will be maintained up to the point this particular person yep. in their growth decide, looking at the body manifestation, this is the path I think I need to go. So the law also provides that they are likely to change from intersex to male, if at all your male, fe male features is what is there, okay. upon examination, or female, or decide that I just want to be an intersex person. Right. We have the law proposing <coughs> that no medical action need to be taken, no surgery, unless the life of that particular child is okay. in danger, okay. and you have to make a decision. Okay. And that also just speaks to Article 26. When you're talking about at what point can abortion be allowed? Only when the lives of the mother is, is, a, is at risk. So having said this, it also gives an opportunity for this child to survive, because previously we have cultures where such children were thrown. Mm. Uh, the commissioner has said, mm. Uh, marriages break. Sure. And therefore, this child has a, r a right to life just like any other. So this, among many other things, and some of the uh, offenses it creates, the access to go to school, mm -hmm. and the schools making sure that um, uh, the right facilities, whether they are sanitation facilities, making sure, for instance, that uh, if I am a nurse's person and I want to marry, uh, I subject, I'm subjected to the Marriage Act. So it has a number of good uh, proposals that this country, if support, it, if they are supported, yeah. then we'll deal with discrimination, we'll, deal, we'll bring in issues of equity and equality, both in service and justice. You talked about schools, and I want to bring Veronica in there. There's um, a particular clause in there, I think under part three, that deals with the protection of intersex persons. And we'll just pull up the graphic. It says, quote, guaranteeing safety, accessibility, and intersex inclusive programs by progressively including the provision of private and sanitary towel, or rather toilets, um, washing facilities, accommodation facilities, and uniforms that are neutral or, if designated by sex, by allowing the intersex learners to use a facility and uniform that accords the learner's self-recognized sex. And I know there was a lot of concern from parents wondering, what does that mean, gender neutral? <laughs> <laughs> uniforms, gender neutral bathrooms. Also because of, we know what happened in the United States with the bathroom ordinance and a lot of confusion as to do people choose which bathroom they are going to go based on the gender that they are. So just to seek clarity on what that actually means. Uh, thank you. Uh, I mean, I, I think uh, one of the key things I would really want to clarify is that if you look at that proviso, that clause 10, yeah. uh, it speaks about the right to education for the intersex persons. And of course, uh, what you've mentioned is just a, uh, a sub-clause right. on the same, just indicating uh, how we need to start addressing the challenges that faces intersex persons when it comes to uh, 
using or usage of uh, some of these facilities. Mm. One of the key things I think uh, I, I like is the fact that I've seen that in social media, uh, someone just picked on the gender neutral and decided <laughs> that yeah. is what the bill is all about. Right. Unfortunately so, uh, but nevertheless I think for us that was still awareness because then it, it cautions all of us to start looking at the bill yeah. and appreciate the content of the bill and that is also the importance of public participation. Allow me to just delve into that and indicate when you are looking at the toilets being gender neutral, the discussion here should again reflect the realities of our lives. Back at home, do we have, uh, ha do we have uh, toilets that are marked male or female? Mm. Or do we use the same toilet? Right. All we are saying is uh, the reality of an intersex person, and I would think I would really wanted to encourage all of us to interact with our intersex persons uh, and get to understand. One of the key things they do when they go to uh, public facilities is that uh, if you go to the male side, and because you, you, from your end, your features look male. Mm -hmm. But because you're intersex, there's something that will just look off. So the persons there will tell you, this is not your toilet, go to the next. Mm -hmm. Only for you to get to the lady's side and you're told, go to the next. So all we are trying to, we are not saying now change all the toilets and make them gender neutral, not necessarily. But, all, but what we are saying is, and that proviso seeks to inform the school administration, and in particular the cabinet secretary in charge of education, that there's need for them to start, uh, to start putting in, in measures that then we'll ensure that the intersex learner at any given point is accommodated. Mm -hmm. And of course, another area that they can easily go, in, go into the toilets without necessarily creating more toilets. So is a PWD. that's designated for them, different from male and female, or? It's also a PWD. A, a PWD. Mm. It is, uh, I mean, we have, the, we have toilets marked for, for PWD. Yes. Yeah. I mean, for those toilets, we have both, both genders going in or both sexes go in. So, I mean, you know, sometimes I think it's only that when you, when you just pick a phrase and you run with it without necessarily digesting and understanding, then you end up missing the point. Because if today we go in every facility that has a PWD toilet, you will get both a person who is male who has disability goes into that, similarly for a person who has disability and is a female. Right. So all we are saying is there are challenges and there are realities. I would yeah. really want to welcome uh, the members of the public to understand and appreciate yeah. that it is so difficult to even afford an intersex person that right to use that toilet. It, it sometimes it becomes very difficult. And I think also they, there's a feature also that was done by Citizen TV three years ago. And we had a documentary, of course, that, uh, that, uh, that was able to at least uh, air more than six intersex persons who are speaking about their realities. You only need to listen to that feature and you come back and you realize it is a reality. So I think on this one, we should not focus so much on the gender neutral, but rather the big question from, for all of us should be, how can we put measures to support that intersex learner, whether it is one or two or even ten in our school, yeah. what can happen? And let me, Victoria, allow me to give maybe a practical example. Currently, we have intersex learners who are in boarding schools mm -hmm. and even in primary school. And what is happening is we know of some schools who have decided yeah. that because they already know that this child is intersex, they bring them, they have allowed them to you make use to utilize or to make use of the staff room toilets. Okay. So that way, we are just saying use what you have, but kindly just take note that the challenges are difficult. Time is almost up, so let me finish with you, Dr. Wamalua, because even if this bill passes and is set into law, you'll be dealing with attitude changes. You'll be dealing with people's perceptions on what an intersex person is. And so the work really begins then. Sure. Um, so how do we begin to normalize conversations and properly integrate them into society? and not other them, if you will. Sure. Uh, thank you, Victoria. Actually, so far, what we're doing, uh, we're working with the Kenya Curriculum Development. Already, we're having uh, some programs. I mean, we're having uh, some uh, injections of uh, definitions of who an intersex person is within the, the curriculum. Okay. Uh, right now, we're working with the medical institutions to make sure that at least let, because like uh, my colleagues just said, even professionals, not everybody really understands what intersex persons are, even from the medical point of view. Mm -hmm. So we are having uh, the intersex uh, issues being mainstreamed in all the institutions. Uh, right now, with the DCI, I'm happy that at least they have an eye marker on their forms, uh, even I mean, within the police station. Mm -hmm. uh, we are working with the, the insurance, I mean, national uh, hospital insurance funds to make sure that at least they cover you know, the intersex persons are medical bills because now they understand. So I know it's a journey, but uh, what we are working towards is to make sure that we are mainstreaming uh, intersex persons into all the institutions. 
uh, right now the police force they really understand that in case any intersex child or person not child intersex persons right. you know falls uh, uh, I mean uh, less of uh, the law and they are reprimanded then they are not put in, in the cell in the normal you know cells so so far we are actually on it and uh, I know it's not going to be easy, it's a journey, but we're heading there. With this, once this one goes through, then this will be the first breakthrough. Thank you very much, Dr. Wamalwa, Veronica, and Eric for coming in. I know we didn't have enough time to flush out a lot of the issues, but this is the beginning mm -hmm. to have such conversations. And, you know, it will draw up questions, difficult questions, yes, but sure. that's what we need to do to start sensitizing people yeah. on what intersex persons actually have to go through, um, not just in this country, but across yeah. the continent and the world. On that note, we take a short break. Here on Citizen Weekend, sports news is coming up next. <laughs>